I'm Andre and I'm a black nerd. And I'm a dorkable. I'm an adorable dork, just like Zoe De Chanel. She plays Jess Day, no relation to Felicia, in the new show New Girl, which premieres September 20th on Fox. You can see the trailer here, and just because I like ya, here's a link to download the first episode for free on the iTunes. Happy birthday. And I want to hear from you. Who do you think is adorkable? Let me know in the comments below. It could be somebody you know, somebody famous, me. Oh yeah, I'm adorkable. We can talk about making love of foxes, Peter Pan, and the pirates. This got me thinking. There are a lot of adorkable ladies, but are there any adorkable cartoon ladies? Growing up in the 80s and 90s, most women cartoon characters were just female versions of the male cartoon characters. You know, like Smurfette, Lola Bunny. No, no, she does not exist. Exist. She does not exist! So in honor of New Girl, I have compiled a list of seven adorkable female cartoon characters. I'm a sick man. Number seven, Daria. She's the adorkable 90s MTV generation alternative chick. She's like if Janine Garofalo, Winona Ryder, Parker Posey, and the Nostalgia Chick had a cartoon baby. Number six, Jeanette from Alvin and the Chipmunks. Yes, for all you furries out there, there are animals on this list. Yeah. But look at her, she's just too adorable. You got the ponytail, the big glasses, the blue sweater, the falling down socks. Oh my gosh, she's like an animal version of Irma. Save that for later. Number five, Big Ethel from Archie Comics. While most people were fighting over Betty and Veronica, I kept my eyes on Big Ethel. She was that tall, thin, buck-toothed, dorky chick that was always chasing at the Jughead. Jughead, put down them burgers. Hook up with Big Ethel. I'm sure she's got a burger for you. Now lately, the Archie Comics have dropped the big from Big Ethel and they gave her this makeover a la season four Ugly Betty. But for me, the original Big Ethel will always be the best. Besides, she'll probably hit some puberty spurt and then she'll turn into this hot supermodel chick. What, am I the only person that saw the TV movie Archie Return to Riverdale, which is actually called Archie to Riverdale and back again, and then they changed it to Archie Return to Riverdale? Okay, I'm gonna stop now. Number four, Belle from Beauty and the Beast. That's right, we have a dorky Disney princess. Think about it, Belle is perfect for this list. She didn't start out as a princess. Everyone in the village thinks that she's odd. They even sing about it every single morning. She reads books? Whoa! And to top it all off, does she go out with the big, muscly, handsome Gaston? No, she hooks up with a big brown beast. This gives me hope. Number three, Gadget from Chippendale's Rescue Rangers. Yay! She makes inventions that don't work. She says, golly, she wears a purple jumpsuit. What was the deal with 90s cartoon chicks and jumpsuits? And I know what you're thinking. Whoa, 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 Chip and Dale wanted to hook up with her. The only reason why Chip and Dale wanted to hook up with Gadget was because she was the only woman around. What were they gonna do? Hook up with Monterey Jack? Or Zipper? Trust me, you throw Britney from the Chipettes in front of Chippendale, they will be all over her and forget about our little mousy friend. Leaving me room to step right in. <laughs> I mean, leaving room for the other woodland creatures. I'm not weird! Number two, Irma from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Is it just me does it look like Irma and Jeanette came from the same family tree? Somebody in Irma's family hooked up with a chipmunk, and I bet you that same chipmunk was the one who used to date Chip and Dale and left them for this guy, which is why they are now trying to hook up with Gadget. Oh yeah, there is some secret stuff going on in Toontown. Controversies. It is a fact that every hot chick has to have a dorky best friend. So for every April O'Neil, there's gotta be an Irma. Dorky, clumsy, klutzy, boy crazy, big glasses, baggy clothes, staying at home making microwave pizzas, they have little meatballs on them and spawn evil creatures that then grow into larger creatures when they hit water. Come on, Ninja Turtle fans, you know what I'm talking about. Case of the Killer Pizzas. What, what? Number one, Velma from Scooby-Doo. Come on, people, you should have seen this coming. Velma is the poster child for adorkable females everywhere. She's smart, she's sassy, she's dorky, she wears a big orange sweater. Seriously, does every cartoon chick that's a dork have to wear a big sweater? And I think people could relate to Velma more than Daphne because Velma actually had a personality. What was Daphne's personality on the show? She didn't have any. Thank you. That's why in the movie they had to make that whole backstory about her learning martial arts and crap. And then they made Scrappy-Doo the villain. But Velma was completely set. She had her jinky, she had her my glasses. I can't see without my glasses. She had her knee-high orange socks, yeah. And if that weren't adorkable enough, then when they make the Scooby-Doo movie, Velma is played by Linda Cardellini. Adorkable overload. Bless you, Velma Dinkley. I love you, and I will personally eat your Scooby snacks anytime. Oh yeah, I'm adorkable. We can talk about making love of foxes, Peter Pan, and the pirates.